Okay, hey, it's Chris, and today's exercise in futility is going to be a review of the language arts questions for subtest one, and I'll go ahead and circle that on the screen so you can see it. And uh, let me just disclaim this. Um, all I'm going to do is offer you suggestions for what to do. Um, I'm basing that on certainly uh, successful people's experiences in just pr you know pure test procedures, and I'm going to try to pass that along to you. But uh, this is just a review and just some suggestions, so I, I hope you find it helpful. If you don't, then um, I don't know what to say. I won't say I'm sorry. I'll just say, wow, what a drag. Anyway, <clears throat> my suggestion, of course, is that you try to aim for minimum scores on each part of the subtest, because remember, uh, one part of the subtest, of course, is language arts, and that's for subtest one. Remember, and this pen is not working very well, so let me try to erase that and make it a little bit clearer for you. Uh, we have language arts on one side of our CSET subtest one, and then on the other side we're going to have social studies. My suggestion is that you aim for a minimum of 17 correct on language arts and a minimum of 17 correct on social studies. You'll have to do reasonably well in the essays, and I will review the essays separately in a separate uh, bunch of video series, ease, however you would do the plural for that. Today will just be the multiple choice, and this lecture, or discussion, whatever you want to call it, is just going to concern language arts. All right, well, the first thing that you need to do, obviously, is take the test. So hopefully you had the chance to do that. And let me find the appropriate page. And um, one of the first procedures that I'd like you to consider is not just doing things from one to item 26. You're going to see 26 questions on, on language arts and 26 questions on social studies. I don't know if you really want to just plow through the test from one to the end. I think a better procedure is to always look at the questions first, give yourself a second, and consider the following. Like this question, for example, is quite short. Question number one. Question number four, on the other hand, looks a little longer. So if I were going after my 17 questions, I'm going to try to find the short ones first because it's obviously going to take me uh, seconds to figure out if I'm even going to bother with it because either I know it or I don't. Whereas question number four is going to take me a while to get a sense of whether or not it's worth my time to do it. Now, of course, you're going to answer all the questions. That goes without saying, but... I would not do them in order uh, if I were taking the test. What you do is up to you, of course, but I would do things uh, a little differently. Okay, well, let's start. Um, I'm going to blow the screen up just a bit, and hopefully you know how to maximize your window by now. Um, if not, I don't know what to tell you. Just watch the first video again and keep trying. And let's just do them in order, even though I would not. Um, starting with question one, the answer is B, Trone. What's going on in this question? Well, a lot is going on in this question. You have to get accustomed to the nuances of how these questions are asked, and what they do is set up conditions. You have to find the answer that best matches the conditions. And so, in looking at question number one, which reads as follows, I'll highlight the whole thing first. Some common vowel patterns are associated with one or more pronunciation, uh, like steam and bread. Notice the EA pattern right here, steam and bread. Two different pronunciations, one being the long vowel, steam, and in the latter case, the short vowel, uh, E for bread. So what they want to know is which of the following nonsense words illustrates a vowel pattern that is consistent. In other words, doesn't have a long and a short or other type of pronunciation. So what we need to do is look at the vowel patterns inside each of these words, like OO and OA and OW and OUGH. Well, the first thing that you should notice if we just work backwards is a word like MO uh, right here, a nonsense word like that. OUGH is very unstable because we have, uh, just consider this pair. We have, for example, thought, and we also have through. So that is automatically going to be eliminated because we already have two uh, different pronunciation patterns. And I, again, I apologize for my pen. I don't know what's going on. 
I see uh, probably I'll be buying more RAM in my future. Well, anyway, Mo is out, or however you would pronounce that, because that OUGH pattern is unstable. The same is true with OW. OW also has, I don't know if you want to call them exceptions, but there's, there are other pronunciations. Like, just think of the word row. And I'm not saying row, like the British would, but row, as in row, row, row your boat. Versus um, another pronunciation in here, like cow. So there are two variations in that pronunciation that could be associated with that pattern, and so it is not consistent. The same thing with uh, stuck, or, or st however you would want to pronounce that, with like u or u uh in a, that's out as well because there are two variations. OA seems to be more stable, it really just has that trone uh, pronunciation. Um, and it's going to be more consistent than the rest. And that's why it happens to be B. So let me sum this up for you. What you need to do is match the answers to the conditions. Find the answer that best fits the pattern according to the conditions. In this case, we don't want anything that has exceptions to it. What we want to find is something that's consistent, and that happens to be B. Okay, great. Let's go on to the next one. Um, taking a look at question number two which reads as follows, oral rhyming activities are most likely uh, to promote phonemic awareness by helping a child learn to learn to what? Well, first of all, we're dealing with phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness, you should understand as the uh, awareness of individual or other sounds in English. So we're not dealing with any letters or any print at all. So when we look down at these uh, answers, first thing I would be doing is knocking off anything that deals with spelling or print or anything like that. Now, phonemic awareness certainly can help spelling, but when they say oral rhyming activities, uh, specifically phonemic awareness, we're talking about kindergarten uh, in this case, very, very early, early foundations. So since we're talking kindergarten, based on the type of activity that we're dealing with, like phonemic awareness, it's not going to be something like how the structure of a word relates to its meaning. When they say something like structure of a word, what they're talking about is like prefix, suffix, and root, where you'd be looking at something like aster. Let me try to write that in here clearly, see if this thing will cooperate. And it kind of did. Thank you, computer. Well, anyway, aster, aster is like a, a root word. You get asterisk, asteroid, and other meanings out of it, but that's not part of phonemic awareness. Identify junctures between syllables. Hmm, that's a possibility, and I just moved my screen. Come on back. Uh, identify the syllables in a word, or we're just going to be looking at the sounds in a word. So the toss-up is between A and B. Now, look at what the, t the phonemic awareness activity is. We've narrowed it down to two possibilities, ones that deal with sounds and things that deal with things that kindergarten kids could handle since it's part of the foundations. We're looking for oral rhyming activities. Well, oral rhyming activities are not going to be based on syllables because syllables don't necessarily make words rhyme. Think instead about word families. The at family, for example, if I can just write at up here for you, we have the cat sat on the mat in the most basic rhyme that you can come up with. And it's based on the word family since everything sounds the same throughout. Um, that sentence is, has some kind of a rhyme um, associated with it, and that's why A is correct. So B would be out, and A would be correct. Okay, great. Let's uh, go on to the next.